everybody. Welcome to episode six of the De Anza Sports Voice. I'm Alex. And I am Anthony. And today we have two guests from our newsroom. My name is Sunny. Uh, my name is Alan. And uh, it's been a bit, but uh, we're going to try to cram everything in today. Um, we have one matchup of the NBA final, or one team of the NBA Finals ready to go, the Boston Celtics. Uh, they completed a clean sweep of the Indiana Pacers. Get them brooms out. Yep, get them brooms out. Um, since the Celtics won this series, it's uh, generated a bit of controversy from fans because of supposedly how easy the Celtics' run was to the NBA Finals. Um, anybody want to comment on that real quick? But, um, yeah. Actually, Boston had a pretty easy track because they pretty much avoided all the major stars, Embiid, Giannis. Um, um, they didn't have to face any major superpower in the West uh, Eastern Conference. One thing I would say to that, though, is every team who plays in the playoffs and the finals, there's injuries always for any team, every team. And it just so, so happened that all of Boston's opponents, their best players were out at least a game or two throughout the series. All you can do is play who's a, who's in front of you on the schedule. So yeah, can't take it away from them. Although you, you can talk about how it was an easy um, series of uh, games for them. Mm -hmm. With Halliburton being out after game two, I believe, and um, you also got to put into account. You also got to put into account Indiana had some big leads throughout the series, and they blew it. Yeah, especially in games three and four at home, they had it wasn't twenty points. I know it was somewhere in the ten to twenties, but they had some big leads at home without Halliburton, and they just ended up blowing it at the end. Even game one with Halliburton, they had the lead till the very end, where Jalen Brown hit that three. Went to overtime, and it was Celtics' game from there. Yeah. So but, it was kind of a missed opportunity from the Pacers in the first couple games, and then from there, without Halliburton, there was not really much they could do. Yeah. With um, But, you know, Indiana's a young team. They Some some say they shouldn't have been here, but it was a good run. So um, I guess we'll see what's in the future for them. Sonny, Allen, do you guys have... Anything to say? Oh. Uh, I just wanted to say that even though the Pacers did get swept, two of the games that they did lose were actually by a three-point uh, difference. So I don't think... Uh, I think it was know. games three and four, right? Yeah, those yeah. are the two games. So back-to-back, -back, they actually you know had a pretty close game. So I don't think it was... you know I think the Pacers next year are... Uh, I would say look out for them next year. They look pretty Maybe good. more defense. Mm -hmm. They're a solid team. I mean, with uh, Siakam and Halliburton, that's a good duo. Mm -hmm. Neesmith has been really good. Nemhard really stepped up this playoffs, especially this um, ECF run. You got to put it to so. account. Don't forget, Benedict Matherin was out for these was. for this whole playoff run. He definitely could have provided a spark for the team, especially with uh, with how young he is. He's only in his second year, going yeah. into his third. So he definitely could have provided some some support there. Yeah, and real real quickly going back to the Celtics because this is about the Celtics as they did win the ECF and are going to the finals. How do you guys believe they'll do? Whoever they match up with, what do you? What's your guys' um, predictions for them? Do you guys believe that they'll be able to win the finals? I mean, right now it looks like the Mavericks they're up three one. Um, it's game it's, six, it's or, looking like it's looking like a Mavericks Celtics finals if Dallas can win tonight Thursday May thirtieth. Yeah. So with that being said, if everyone here believes that the Mavericks are going to win, we will see. How do you guys feel about this matchup? Do you guys think the Celtics are the better team? Do you guys think the Mavericks are the better team? What do you guys predict will happen? Uh, um, overall, I think Dallas. Um, Boston is the deeper team, and the one thing that you have to keep in mind is, you know, they pretty much didn't have to play Porzingis throughout the whole playoffs. So the fact that they didn't need like pretty much one of the top three players shows how much e easier a matchup they had in the Eastern Conference. So whoever comes out of the West, honestly, I can't, I can't really see them posing as much as a threat to Boston because uh, Minnesota is not really playoff tested. Um, Dallas is more like backcourt centered. 
which Boston has all the backcourt defenders to be able to stop Dallas or at least give them a hard time. So uh, it seems like Dallas has a better route to winning it all this year. Okay, sorry, about Boston. So um, related to what you just said, do you think if it does turn into a Mavs-Celtics final, um, how do you think the score would go? Or like of the how many games? How many do you games think do you seven, think it do you think would go in? Like Boston and this, Dallas and that. Yeah, like do you think it would be a sweep by Boston, or do you think the Mavericks would get close? To, to me, I mean Dallas. You know, you gotta give a lot of credit to their head coaching. You know, and staff. They done they did a really good job of you know figuring out the matchups and how to utilize their players. Um, I would definitely give Dallas respect. You know, I wouldn't think it would be a sweep, but I could. I don't see this uh, final series going past six games. So I see Boston winning four two. Um, I'm gonna go different from everybody. I think um, Dallas's front court and, and Luca and Kyrie will make life difficult for that Boston backcourt on defense. I think um, you know, obviously Luca is playing is still sort of playing through an injury yes. and Kyrie has been a bit um you know foreshadowed throughout the whole playoff run except for a couple of games in this uh, in WCF but uh, I think they'll be able to utilize um and find the defensive weaknesses in that Boston backcourt and then if they can um show the weaknesses of that Boston backcourt they could also use that to um utilize their big men with Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford and you also um PJ Washington but if he, if he could just shoot better then I could see Dallas taking this in 6 or 7 okay yeah i mean for myself well first off i was wrong about the uh western conference series i did believe that the timberwolves would be would be able to win in 6 um I was wrong about that. Yeah, we both were. We it both was not. That. It was. It, it's not good. One of the biggest things I noticed was the Timberwolves are a really great defensive team, but, but they the, lack a bit on offense. Yeah, the Mavericks are a better offensive team to their defense than they are than the Timberwolves are offensively to the Mavericks defense. If that makes sense. So it was great from the uh, Mavericks. Their star players showed out, obviously. Because like, because like Minnesota. This is, sorry, do you want to keep going? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I thought that Luca's injury was going to play a big part in this series. And Luca just showed that it don't matter. He's one of one. But when it comes to this finals run, I, if which I'm thinking they are, if they uh, make it to the finals against the Celtics, I, I have to take the Celtics in six. I think Drew Holiday and Derek White, they're both all defensive players. And uh, Jason Tatum, even though he hasn't been shooting well from three, I believe in this past ECF, he's he's been averaging 30 points per game, 10 rebounds a game, and over six assists. I might be mistaken, but he's had a great ECF, and Jalen Brown's been amazing like usual. Chris Porzingis is coming back, and I just don't see the Mavericks being able to keep up with the firepower that the Celtics have. With that being said, Luka's going to get his points. Kyrie's going to get his points, and they're really good at g- keeping games close. So I would give the Celtics in six is my prediction. I feel like it, uh, go ahead. another thing I would like to add is if you really think about it, look at how Dallas struggle against Anthony Edwards. Can you imagine them trying to stop Jason Tatum and you know and Brown? I mean, and another thing is you have to keep in mind that Porzingis hasn't played, so Porzingis and Horford will be a handful for Dallas. I can see that happening. But um, if in my opinion, I feel like the only reason I pick the reason I pick Dallas in six or seven is the two superstars, Boston, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown. They could honestly have some of those games where one of them is cold and one of them is hot. Because, um, but and but if you also have a game where both of them are cold, then. You you better hope one of those guards could just step up to keep the game close because if not then it's it could result in a loss because there have been some games throughout um, the playoff tenure between Tatum and Brown where one is hot and one is not a good example could be in the twenty two NBA Finals between uh, the Celtics and the Warriors 
Jalen Brown was terrific that series. But there was also a lot of the series, Jason Tatum has went cold. And then that, that could be the reason why Boston went down in six. So if, if the scenario like that happens again with this final series, then that's, that's why I choose Dallas in six or seven. Yeah, definitely going off of that too. I mean, uh, Dallas's bench is a lot better than the Celtics bench. Yeah. So that's going to play a big part in the game. Because um, if you because if Dallas's bench can keep the scoring up, that means they give more rest to Luca and Kyrie, and then the other starters, therefore keeping them less fatigued going into the end of the game. Versus the uh, the Celtics, their starters usually have to stay in the game pretty much the whole game. The only substitution you would see is probably Al Horford coming in. Um, Wait, wait, he's a starter, right? Al Horford. He is, but if Porzingis comes back... Yeah, yeah, if Porzingis comes back, then you'll probably see Al Horford coming in for Porzingis. He'll probably get around 20 minutes a game, I Yeah. Say. But with that being said, though, with what you said, the difference is this isn't the 22 Celtics. This is, Drew yeah. Holiday is a... I would I would say is a better defender right now than Marcus Smart. Yeah, he's a better Marcus Smart. He has, uh, a, he has a three-point shot. He could get his points, on, his points off. Um... Derek White is one of the most impactful players. He's better than he was then as well. Way, I don't even, was he on the? Celtics yeah, yeah, he, he was, yeah. yeah. Um, and then they don't have Robert Williams anymore, so obviously they they, they are, they're missing a bit of inside defense there, but with Porzingis' height. You and know, you're getting his offense. And you're getting so, Porzingis' offense, so that's more there. There's so many creators on that Celtics offense, and they were one of the best defenses this year because of their backcourt as well. It's just more, it's pretty much more if, if their bench can produce. Exactly. And and if Tatum can produce. And if this. Tatum can produce and not get cold. Because the, mo- the most important thing is somebody uh, not going cold. For sure. For throughout any game of this series. You also have to take um, into account the fact that even though it's 3-1, like, the Timberwolves still can drag out the game. Like, maybe another... Say they win uh, the next game, or even, if they're lucky, the game after that. It could, be a re- it could be a repeat of last year's Eastern Conference Finals, where um, Miami goes up 3-0, mm-hmm. Boston forces a Game 7, but then, you know, what could happen in Game 7, if if that happens? Uh, yeah, that's true, but I'm just saying, like, that's also going to fatigue... Dallas, but you yeah. know, and the longer those games are, the higher chance of an injury can happen to one of their star players or just any of their players in general, and that can put them in a really bad spot. True. However, I don't, I don't really think. I do think the next game that Dallas and the Timberwolves play, I think Dallas will be able to get the win. But it just really does depend on the players. Like if Cat, if Cat if Cat can play as good as he did in Game Four, then they have a chance. Yeah, they have a chance. But but Cat if- at the same time, along with Rudy Gobert and Anthony Edwards, they've been in foul trouble. Cat, especially Cat, he's been in a lot of foul trouble throughout this whole series. He fouled out in Game Four. I think he had four or five fouls in Game Three, and it's it's pretty much been a problem for him throughout the whole playoff run. That he's and he's also committing dumb fouls. Like these aren't fouls where he, uh, the players being aggressive against him. It's more of just like bad fouls but you know we'll just see how he plays and we'll take it from there i really like the point that you brought up alan because the celtics are having a lot of rest during this time so yeah they, the haven't, they haven't they haven't played in like i think since as of monday, right? monday or tuesday since monday the 26th 27th monday the 27th so this is valuable time for the celtics mm-hmm. while the um the Mavericks are still continuing the series, obviously. So therefore, it's more holds. fatigue. So they are more fatigued. Obviously, you do get, I believe it's a week or two-week break after the series to the finals. I believe the finals begin on June 6th. Yeah, I'm pretty, but, sure, I'm pretty sure the finals begins yeah. exactly a week from now. So right now, it's May 30th, Thursday. I think it starts Thursday, the but, next Thursday. But anything can happen in any game, in any series. Yeah. So that's, you know, God forbid any injuries, but anything is able to happen any tweaks any uh, bad movements anything like that so you, you if you're the Mavericks you really gotta hope that you just come out of this series healthy and end it as soon as possible because you don't want to give the Timberwolves any any more reason like okay we got a game now we could we could bring this back yeah you don't want to give them that kind of uh, motivation and um, 
Yeah, I mean, the Timberwolves are probably thinking, we win today, we're bringing this back to Minnesota. We will yeah. find out. We will, we will find out definitely. later on. But um, that's all the time we got. Uh, thank you guys again for listening to the Danza Sports Voice. This is episode six. Uh, remember, this is a Laveau's production, so please follow Laveau's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Your support means a lot to us. Uh, I'm Alex, and he's beside me, our guest star, Alan, Sunny. And thank you guys for listening. Peace. Peace.